Are we ready to go elk hunting? I'm ready. Are you gonna shoot, Mike? It's totally up to you, Mike. Whatever you wanna do. You knew it'd come to this. Pushing 350. His tops are big. His royals are big as your hand. His yeah. thirds are long. Yeah. Black guards are, everything's good. Not real wide. That's the way these bulls are. Beams are good. Yeah. I don't think they're huge, but. Heavy, heavy. He's got an extra point off of one royal. So he's seven on one side and six on the other. But he's an old bull. You see big old body on him. I thought for sure he had cows and none in here, huh? Maybe he's traveling for them. I don't know. Maybe his cows are up. There's another bull around the corner here, I think. He's got the cows. Yeah, maybe so. Well, saw one potential. That's a good bull. He's pushing 350. Heavy, heavy. You don't see old, heavy, massive bulls like that around here very much. See him, Tyler? It's a good bull, isn't it, Paul? Do you see him, Mike? What do you think, Paul? He's a seven by eight. You want him, Tyler? Warm temps have slowed the rutting activity a little bit, but we're on some good bulls so far, so let's catch back up with Mike and see what we can turn up. There's a bull to the, on the base of the hill. Yeah, he's a nice wide, he's pretty perfect. I think that bull down here got his kicked by that bull he took his cow. As we backed out for the evening and the sun went down, the cooler temperatures caused the rutting activity to pick up drastically. More and more bugling bulls began to show themselves. It became clear we're going to be back in this exact same spot at daylight the next morning. Day one in the books, a couple close calls, but uh, we got in here at three o'clock this afternoon. There was a bull bugling from his bed. So we just set up on him and got a couple glimpses of him. I thought he was a pretty good bull. He went up to the top, got in a fight with another bull, lost his cows, came back down, heard Paul cow called. He got nervous, he knew something was wrong and boogered down the drainage. But the bully lost his cows too. He's a big six point and he's up on top. So we're gonna come back in the morning and hopefully get on one of the two bulls. So there's two good bulls that we're after in here. So that part of the job's done. Now we just gotta get in close enough to get Hunt Winter Mike a shot to be continued first thing in the morning. On day one, we found a couple good bulls. Now it's just a matter of closing the distance and placing the shot on one.
catch some elk moving around. And uh, I heard a rock roll over there. And then about 10 minutes later, Paul saw a bull come out. And uh, he walked right underneath us, about 80 yards. And he's a really cool bull, probably like a, maybe a 300 frame, 310, but he had a 20 inch, maybe 24 inch drop time. But he's a young bull. He really has a lot of potential. A bull like that could definitely uh, crack the tape at 400 sometime in his life with that extra point. I mean, if that thing gets to 30 inches long, he just has to get to 360, 370 on the frame, and he, he'll hit 400. The morning's excitement wore off, and that afternoon, found us moving into some new areas. Over 3.30, his fronts are short, we know that. His thirds are good, his width is good. His back end, his top end, is like a 340, but his first two are like a 310. There he is, right where the, below the calf. He's got to come out on this lower. No. He's going to go up and get those cows and bring them down. Yeah, he's going up the cat track. There he is. He's a pretty 330. That's probably the best bull we've seen. I know. Mean, the good thing is, is they're out. I mean, Got a good bugle. Are you gonna shoot, Mike? Okay, let's go try to find it then. He keeps thinking about that one over there. Then let's go take a look and let's go find that other one then. Okay. I just, a cameraman just needs to know if you're gonna shoot so you don't surprise us. That's, that's totally up to you, Mike, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> you knew it'd come to this. See if we can get a shot on it. We have time to check just one more drainage before dark. Hopefully, we can turn up aces. When you see a lone satellite bull like this one, you know there has to be a big herd bull somewhere in the area. Just when we thought the evening hunt was coming to a close, the unexpected happens. He's down. Check. 
myself in my foot. Oh boy. I thought I got it. Mike, lucky you're waiting for this bull. This is bigger than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's dead. I heard a whole bunch of crashing going on. That's the bull you came after, Mike. It's the bull from the top. From the top. Yeah, that we saw the other night, the laid down. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. That's a nice well, thank you. Good shoot. He was jacking a shot, and I said, friend. he's not going to pass this one up, or I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> dead. Outstanding. Yep. Perfect shot. Oh, he is heavy. Congratulations, Mike. Thank what you, a Mike. bull. We're here with our 2016 hunt winner, Mike Rodner from Buffalo, Wyoming. He connected on this really nice trophy bull elk down here in Colorado. If you get your name in the hat, for all the subscribers, we pull one name out of the hat each year to come down to Colorado and hunt with us. Hopefully next year it'll be your name. So get your name in the hat by subscribing to Eastman's Hunting or Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal, and we'll see you down here in Colorado next year with a little bit of luck. We hope you enjoyed today's show. We had a great time bringing it to you from the bugling, bull-infested Southern Colorado country. It was a good time and a lot of action. Until next time, remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. 